Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. My name is Alex Keshomo, and above that, I love Christ as my personal savior, and behalf of the vicar of this church, Reverend Desmond Como, and also the elders of this church, I would like to welcome each and every one of us in today's service, being the 10th Sunday after Trinity. We are going to start with a word of prayer, and then from there, I will read the word and we will listen from the speaker of today. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we come before your presence this morning. We honor your holy name for whom you are our Redeemer Father, for what you have done into our lives, O Lord. Thank you you have been with us the whole that week, and now you have brought us safely here this morning. May you be with us, my Redeemer Father, even those who are watching at home, O God. Continue to give us your blessing. Continue to be with us, O Lord. Even the speak of the word, my Redeemer Father, as he minister your word, O King Glory. May you be with him. May he get the strength that comes from you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, and Savior. Amen. The reading that is going to guide us today is taken from the book Isaiah, chapter number 40, reading from verse number 28 down to 31. Isaiah chapter number 40, reading from verse number 28 down to 31. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the earth, heads of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even the youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, they will soar on their wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. And this is the word of the Lord. And now it is my pleasure to invite the speaker of the day, Fred uh, Corinth. Welcome. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I want to say thank you to the Almighty God who has given me this opportunity to share the word. And once again, I want to say thank you to the vicar for having also remembered me to come and use his pulpit. Today's message comes from the theme that was set for the year, and that is Isaiah chapter 40 and it is written but those who hope in the Lord but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint this theme is relevant and I want to believe God must have used our vicar to come up with such a text is talking about waiting those who hope in the Lord other translation uses the word those who wait upon the Lord and my topic will come from the theme that was said that is in Isaiah 40 but for the interest of this service we'll read from um, from verse 28 to 31 now, friends, if you have time, you can read it. Waiting for something can be one of the most challenging things in life. Waiting. Yes, the Bible is telling us that, that those who wait upon the Lord. But on the other hand, waiting can be one of the most challenging things. I don't know if there's anyone who likes to wait. Think of someone who is stuck in a jam. How frustrated you are. How challenging that can be. Someone said that when you do not know what to do, just wait. Wait. Holiday speaking, waiting is hard work. At times, especially to Christians, it can be a serious test of faith. It brings anxiety, frustrations. Generally, 
is especially difficult when there is no guarantees that our waiting will ever in the lifetime. There's no guarantee that whatever you are waiting for shall come to pass. That makes it even more difficult. Desire we long for prayers. We have been praying and news we are waiting to hear can tempt us to be impatient, can tempt us to be discouraged, to worry, and even to wonder if God really cares, if God really exists. Like now, everyone, I want to believe that all of us, we have been waiting to see schools open. We have been waiting to see when the vaccine will be found to respond to the stubborn COVID-19. And the candidates, those who are supposed to sit for KCPE and KCSE, they are running out of options. And I want to believe the parents and the guardians cannot even wait any longer. Those who wait and find are expected to acquire certain qualities. One of the qualities is that is discipline. The second one is trust. Trust and confidence. If you are waiting upon the Lord, it requires discipline. It requires trust and confidence. It requires obedience. And for Christians, it requires prayer. A lot of you have to pray. And ETC, the list is endless. In the Bible, there is a long list of individuals who waited upon the Lord. If you have time and space, we list them. But running from Old Testament to New Testament, we can see individuals who patiently waited upon the Lord or hope in the Lord. Like, for example, in Genesis chapter 29, if you read from verse 31, then you go up to chapter 30 from verse 1 to 2. You see Rachel's frustrations. She was frustrated because she was not able to get a child or children waiting upon the Lord. Exodus chapter 16 and 17, Moses and the Israelites were also in the, uh, the same situation. Now, if you read Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19, we see 10 men who waited upon the Lord for the healing. These were the guys who suffered as a result of the leprosy. Friends, as I have mentioned, time does not allow us to give many examples. But even in the present world, I know people who have been waiting upon the Lord, and they have waited for long. It is interesting to see that Sometimes things that we hope for doesn't come at all. Or sometimes they don't come on time. But even within such a situation, the Bible still encourages Christians to hope in the Lord. That is what Isaiah is telling us. That is the theme that we have. Waiting or hoping in the Lord. Now the question is that we need to ask ourselves. Why should we hope in the Lord? Why should we Christians hope in the Lord? Now Psalm 130 verse 5 to 6 gives us an answer. And Isaiah also gives us an answer. The theme that we have. One of the reasons why we need to hope in the Lord is that he is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. We can trust him. He is reliable. He is always his ways are perfect. His ways are true. We can wait for the Lord knowing that no matter how night might take so long, His light will break through our lives. His promises are real. Number two, the reason why we should wait or hope in the Lord is that waiting upon the Lord attracts God's huge blessings. And friends, I'm using the word blessings carefully here. And in this context, I see blessings here means to be filled with potency of life. To be filled with the potency of life and overcoming defeat. Blessings that brings power for life. Blessings that enhances life. Blessings that increases life. In other words, saying that waiting upon the Lord attracts God's huge blessings. The third one, why we should wait upon the Lord or hope in the Lord is that we wait upon the Lord because 
God has his own time. If you read Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3, it says that God's time is the best. God's time is the best and he knows everything. He knows how, how you and me have been waiting and hoping in the Lord. Now in Psalm 139 from verse 1 to 6, he talks about is God who is all-knowing. He knows everything. And in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, says that we cannot understand God's knowledge. His knowledge, no one can understand. He knows. He knows even how he intends to respond to our needs and prayers. The fourth one, why we need to hope in the Lord, is for the renewal of strength. And Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, says that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Friends, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. It is true beyond that waiting sometimes can be so weary. And in the process, people lose strength. Those who wait in the Lord will renew their strength. There is an assurance that our strength shall be renewed. There is an assurance of becoming what God wants us to be. There is an assurance that God is working and in due time, God will reveal everything is grown in us. I like verse 29 that talks about the Lord gives strength to the weary and increases power to the weak. And indeed, as I've mentioned earlier, Waiting can be so weary. Waiting for something can be so discouraging. But the Bible is telling us that we need to hope in the Lord. Because through hoping, our strength will be renewed. Now, what should we be doing while waiting or hoping in God? There must be something that we have to do. There must be a responsibility as well. The first one is that we must call on God continuously. Call on God continuously. Keep praying. Keep on calling God. Keep praying. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 in King James Version says that pray without ceasing. And if you read Mark chapter 9 verse 23, it talks about keep believing. Keep believing. Keep having faith in the Lord. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 7, it talks about keep on knocking. Continue steadfast in prayer. Being watchful with thanksgiving. And that is Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Number two, our responsibility as we put our trust and wait upon the Lord is that trust in the Lord. Keep on trusting. Trusting here means having confidence in God himself. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 talks about trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Keep on trusting in the Lord with all your heart. The Bible uses the word heart. What is the reason why the Bible uses the word heart here and not the mind? Because in the Hebrew idiom, the heart is the locus of the mind. Everything that we think of, everything that worries has come from the heart. And therefore, trusting in the Lord with all our heart means that it will be a total submission, surrendering to God himself. And the third one is wait for God's promise. Friends, scripture offers plenty of examples of saints who got weary of waiting for God. Some of them had mentioned in the Old Testament. If you read even through the New Testament, we'll find those who got weary and tired waiting for God. In Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 30 to 31, we are told that we have to wait for God's promise. Because God's goodness 
is promised for those who wait patiently for him. No matter how long, regardless of how hopeless things appear to us. Friends, as I finish, the question is, is there some, uh, someone among us trusting God for something? Or hoping in the Lord? Indeed, yes. And it's true beyond doubt that all of us, at some point, we are hoping in the Lord. Like, for example, Kenyans are hoping in God that there shall be economic recovery. Parents and students are trusting God that schools shall be open soon. The word here is trusting God. There are some who are trusting God for good and health status. The entire world now is trusting God that the health that was once robbed by COVID-19 shall be fixed. And even among us here, I want to believe there must be someone who is hoping in God for something. Something that maybe is only you and God who knows. Young people among us, some of them might be trusting God in jobs and maybe stable and good relationships. Well, if you are trusting God for something, remember the following. Call on God continuously. Trust in the Lord. Wait for God's promises. Friends, as I've said earlier that waiting can be one of the most difficult things in life. But we have been told in Isaiah 40 that those who wait upon the Lord or those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be afraid. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that even when we get weary and sometimes you appear missing in action, your Bible still reminds us that even in such situation we still we need to keep on calling on you. We need to keep on waiting for the promises that you gave in the past. Your Bible tells us that, Lord, that we should keep on knocking. Lord, now we can be happy and we can have strength knowing that those who hope in you, Father, you do not disappoint them. Those who hope in you, they will not be ashamed. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that if we hope in you, our strength will be renewed. If we hope in you, Father, we will not go weary. I pray that during time, such a time when we are waiting for so many things from you, Lord, you will give us opportunity to be patient, to be disciplined, to be humble, to be able to call unto you continuously. May your name be glorified. And Lord, I pray that you meet each and every one of us in our point of need. Lord, very soon, we are sure that our prayers will be answered. And it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you intend to support the church through whichever means, we want to say thank you for what you've been doing and we want to pray for the offertory now. Thank you, Lord, for the provision of life that we can live to serve you. And through serving you, we have known you. Lord, we want to say thank you that you have given us, you have blessed us so that we can be careful and be thoughtful to bring back to you. We want to say thank you for those who have given through the pay bill, those who have given through cash, that Lord, such a time you will provide for them, that their pockets and their accounts will not go dry. Lord, you will provide. We want to say thank you that even during such difficult time, Father, we have not gone without. And that is why we find it too easy to 
bring back what belongs to you for the ministry of your word. Your mercy and you know.